Another day, another sicko showing up at the sting house. But this time, we have a party monster on our hands, and no, I'm not talking about the kind who's at the club all night, but one who had some really sinister plans in mind. Meet 40-year-old Alonzo Wayne, who went by the screen name Alonzo403. Hang out the bar for a second, I'll be right back down, all right? All right. Now, I've got some good reasons as to why I called this dude a party monster. While he was a father himself, he had absolutely no hesitation to walk in with bottles and bottles of spirits just to get the party started at the Sting House. But this wasn't anything new for Chris. He'd been in this game for long enough to expect this sort of garbage. These guys, in some cases, had to drive a couple hours or more. And Alonzo Wade was one of those guys. You see, Alonzo traveled for hours on end to make it to the Sting House too. If only these people could put the same effort into things that really mattered, like their own children, the world would be a much better place. Now back to Alonzo. At first, he swiftly moved around the room and tried to get acquainted with his environment. And that's when he pulled an incredibly gross gesture. He's towards the door and he's doing something with a zipper. Now, I still to this day don't know exactly what his plan was. Chris was visibly boggled by this as he said he couldn't quite figure out what exactly was going through Alonzo's mind. He might have been getting ready to go outside to relieve himself or he might have you know. However, to prevent any more disturbances or wardrobe malfunctions, Chris decided to confront him head on as per usual. Do me a favor and uh, put a seat right over in that stool. Yes, sir. Now, what were you doing with your pants there when you were heading towards the door? No doubt that the zipper thing definitely caught Chris's attention. But of course, Alonzo fumbled his response, and guess what? He fumbled hard. But this is where things got weirder. When Chris suspected that Alonzo was hiding something in his pants, Alonzo offered to show Chris what he was doing. The audacity. I mean, wow. Oftentimes, these guys think it's okay to do whatever they do if they have consent of the opposite party. They somehow think that consent goes above the law and basic humanity. But in reality, this isn't anywhere near the case. Under no circumstances is it okay to legitimize these thoughts. If you recognize this, then and only then are you a real human. Anyway, to get the real party started, see what I did there? Chris started interrogating Alonzo about the absolutely ridiculous amount of bottles he brought along. And what was this freak's reply? Well, let's hear it straight from the horse's mouth. Well, that's mine. All of this is yours. Yeah. Making up fake stories on the spot and trying to make things look less bad is always these guys' go-to first move. But Chris wasn't buying any of it. Alonzo then tried to explain that the drinks were all for himself and that he'd take what was left of it back home. You see, Alonzo wasn't going to give up so easily, and as the interrogation turned towards who exactly was involved, Chris was trying to bring some matters to light. And Alonzo, how old are you? 40. 40. I, I told her how old I was. Yeah. And how old is she? Have you noticed how Chris always handles the situation by asking the perpetrator about his actions? What this does is make them rethink what they've done and slowly bring their mind to the reality of their situation. But Alonzo was different. He tried to protect himself by switching up his intentions for the setup. I just wanted a place to drink. I wasn't going to do nothing. You didn't have any place to drink, so you thought you'd come here. As Alonzo attempted to dodge the pointed questions coming his way, I want to focus on a particular detail that he reluctantly shared. The devil's in the details, as they say, and things were definitely going to get all kinds of diabolical. And you, I got a 15-year-old daughter myself. You've got a 15-year-old daughter yourself? Yes. I just wanted a place to sit and drink. Yeah. He was trying to use his own kid as a way to get out of the mess he was in. But it amazes me to what level these guys stoop to when cornered. Apparently, Alonzo wanted to just get wasted at the sting house. So, if he wanted to drink, why wouldn't he just drink at home? That's because Alonzo didn't like drinking in front of his daughter and her friends. Or so he said. The irony is beyond unbelievable. I mean, how does this even make sense? When Chris asked Alonzo the same question, the dude didn't have an answer. But Chris had a great argument that made Alonzo rethink his entire story. So you thought you'd come over here and drink in front of another 15-year-old no. girl who's not your daughter? No, that's not mine. And with that, Alonzo was caught in a hell of a lie. He finally gave in, but not completely. He couldn't admit his inappropriate actions. However, he definitely affirmed his intentions with the drinks. In a hopeless situation like that, I'd say defending himself was the worst thing he could have done. 
and Kurtz took the opportunity to point the question straight back at him and ask Alonzo how he would feel if the same thing would have happened to his daughter. And his reaction is definitely one for the books. 15 year old daughter and her friend. Probably the same way you feel right now. Alonzo simply wouldn't give up. He continued to say he only wanted to party. I don't think he realized how obvious his actual intentions were just by showing up at the house in the first place. But I'm sure Chris wanted to toy with him a little more before he got to fully exposing him. So why is it okay for you to do it? It ain't. And I don't know why I did it. I just wanted to party, that's all. So just party. Chris took his chance and launched the counterattack right away, asking if there were no people his own age to party with. That was just Chris being quick and slick, as always. Meanwhile, Alonzo waffled around the question and couldn't even choke out a halfway decent response. But Chris wasn't backing down, and he was fully determined to make Alonzo admit his intentions. And you know what? I truly admire Chris for staying so cool and calm in charged up situations like these. It really shows how mentally tough he is. And he knows exactly what to say and when to say it. Like this time when he brought up the chats between Alonzo and the setup to prove his point. Alonzo Wade tried to tell me that he was was not there to have sex with a 15 year old girl. If you thought that was crazy, well, I did a little digging myself and came up with Alonzo's chat history, and trust me, it's not for the faint of heart. It's downright disgusting. I mean, imagine talking to anyone, let alone the setup like this. Honestly, how sick do you have to be in the first place to even come up with this stuff? But in this next chat exchange, he just completely admits to his true intention. Way to say the quiet part out loud, buddy. You see, Chris gave him a ton of chances to admit his intentions before having to bring out the big guns, the chats. But alas, these weirdos never learn. However, I doubt he would have kept them hidden, even if Alonzo had admitted. But what you're about to see next is Alonzo trying to convince a setup to go all the way because she had nothing to be worried about. Turns out he couldn't have kids anymore, so that made it all okay, right? Yeah, that is definitely messed up. This guy right here was as nasty as they come. Really shows you how all sense and morals have completely left them or maybe never existed in the first place. And when this couldn't admit to any of his misdeeds, Chris had enough. It, well, it appeared yes. Would I? No. Or maybe. All right. Maybe. What is it, Alonzo? Yes, no, maybe so. Maybe. Maybe. So maybe, maybe you would have had to this girl. Maybe. Make up your mind, Wade. But it looks like his date with the cops was inching closer and closer by the second. But despite all that, Alonzo still had the nerve to attempt a U-turn, desperately trying to spin the situation in his favor at the 11th hour, persistently denying his obvious intention. But Chris fired another metaphorical bullet that cranked up the pressure, forcing Alonzo to finally cough up an answer. The showdown intensified and the drama unfolded as the story took more twists and turns in this high-stakes confrontation. If she wanted to say and I was drunk enough, I'm not gonna say I wouldn't. Yep, you saw that right. This prick was having a hard time owning up to his actions. He really thought that leaving his actions to possibility or chance would do him any good. But you're not as smart as you think you are, Mr. Alonzo Wade. Again, this is another trait shared by many morons not taking responsibility for their ugly action. Maybe reality hasn't hit them hard enough yet, but personally, I think they can't accept it themselves. Just look at this jerk right here. He had a bunch of excuses locked and loaded from the jump. I can't say what I would do when I'm drunk. Yeah, I'm in no way surprised he turned to blaming the booze for his action. But before he could spin any more lies, Chris decided to reveal his true identity. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. Oh, I understand. And we're doing a story yeah. on adults going on the internet. Yeah, Alonzo had nothing much to say. However, Chris rubbed salt into the wound when he asked him what the consequences of his actions would be. And that's when finally, Alonzo accepted defeat. I should go to jail. Put it down! Put your hands in the air! Turn around! He realized that was the only option he had, and well, it definitely was what he deserved. So, what happened to Alonzo Wade after the arrest? Turns out, he pleaded guilty in court with no attempt to get himself out of trouble. Normally, these guys would go for the not guilty plea, so props for having the respect to make it easier for everyone. But here's something interesting. Apparently, out of 18 people ready to be prosecuted for identical crimes that day, only Wade pleaded guilty. I guess Chris really got to him, didn't he? Alonzo Wade's reckoning finally came as the court passed a sentence. 
he was slapped with a 67-day jail term. However, given the credit for the time he had already served, the remainder of his 15-month prison term was suspended. On top of his time behind bars, Wade was hit with a $1,500 fine, and the legal repercussions didn't stop there. He was also tasked with 60 hours of community service on top of it all. Adding another layer to the consequences, Wade was directed to foot part of the bill for the overtime pay to deputies during the investigation, a hefty sum of $1,400. $77. While I'm sure a lot of us would rather see him behind bars for a lot longer than he actually was, I'm happy that he was at least held accountable. Moving on to Alonzo Wade's future, resources say that he got out and started cleaning windows for a living, but that didn't last long as he fell from 16 stories and shattered his legs and pelvis and was bedridden for two years as a result. Even after that, he had to deal with a bunch of health issues and ended up working in a factory. At least that was the last update I could get my hands on. But look what else I found. We got the lowdown on Alonzo Wade's post-Dateline life from none other than his step-grandson, who clarified a lot more about him. But before I reveal that, make sure you don't miss this opportunity to become a member by hitting this tab right here. From making video recommendations to some crazy behind-the-scenes moments, you're gonna have access to some really cool perks. What's more, I got a Discord server just for you so we can chat up and go deeper into more times when people like Alonzo came knocking at the Stinghouse. And guess what? It's free! So back to the video. Turns out dude's been keeping it low-key, still keeping up with his window cleaning job and fishing in his free time. But here's where it gets real. His step-grandson, brave soul that he is, stepped up to answer questions about Alonzo. And oh, the correction he dropped, people were saying that Alonzo fell 16 stories, but nope, it was just eight. Doesn't make much of a difference, but hey, thanks for setting the record straight. Talking about Alonzo's recovery, the step-grandson said, I know, he had multiple reconstructive surgeries and was in a full lower body cast for the two whole years. Couldn't walk after for quite a bit. All in all, I think justice has been served and I hope Alonzo Wade has learned his lesson. But this case still doesn't fail to make my blood boil. Being a father and having the gall to pull off something as disgusting as what he did is really a tough pill for me to swallow. Did the setup mean nothing to him? Who knows? But all the same, I hope no one ends up with a father like Alonzo Wade. Unfortunately, his personal struggles have since extended to family matters. His daughter, who he mentioned during the sting, is reported to be grappling with drug addiction and has completely severed ties with him. On a somewhat brighter note, he maintains what is described as a semi-healthy relationship with his other children and grandchildren. However, complexities exist in his family dynamics, as evidenced by a strained relationship with his step-grandson. Imagine what the family had to go through when they saw him being arrested. Put it down! Put your hands in the air! Turn around! No matter what he says, I'm sure Alonzo was there to get the setup wasted and high. While being on set, I think it's clear he didn't realize the gravity of his actions because in truth, multiple offenses were committed in a row. But you have to thank Chris for kicking another sick human off the streets and making him realize all the wrong he'd done. Again, it's truly admirable how he has a straight, cold demeanor while handling these twisted pricks questioning some important points in action, and most definitely giving them a piece of his mind. This user commented the one thought that must be running through Alonzo Daughter's head, and that was, Thanks for not drinking in front of me and my friends and setting a bad example for me. Alonzo Wade's daughter. Yeah, that pretty much sums up the relationship he had with his daughter. Well, at least he admitted what he was doing was wrong and he accepted the consequences unlike so many other people that have stepped into the sting house. Again, this is all because of Chris Hansen and the showdown Alonzo and he had together. Quite a match, wasn't it? So what are your thoughts about Mr. Party? Do you think he got what he deserved? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to witness more weird encounters like these, make sure you drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notification. And if you thought this video was crazy, make sure to check my next post right here. It's even better.